train the muscles, not the joints. Coffee time. Magical colors out there tonight, eh? All right. So as you guys can see, I'm trying out my new GoPro here. So yeah, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, basically gonna be driving to the butcher shop and going to the gym today. But the whole point of the GoPro is that uh, I'm basically messing around with this so I can give you guys some different type of footage. And so you can see kind of where I am and what I'm doing. And uh, it makes for some pretty nice footage to be able to kind of get stuff on the go sometimes. Because sometimes I can't really, uh, you know, grab onto a camera. You know, it's pretty hard to grab onto a camera and, you know, obviously you can't drive with that and stuff. So nice part about the GoPro is I can kind of just set it up and then leave it. It's not distracting for driving or anything. But yeah, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a subject. And that subject is going to be... I read something on eccentric training the other day and uh, this is from a book that Fred Hatfield wrote a long time ago and uh, you know he knows quite a bit about training and stuff like that or, or he knew you know uh, he was Dr. Squat and everything but I just was reading some of the stuff in there to see what resonated with what I found to be true from my own experiments in the gym and which is what I actually expect you guys to do with my information as well like see what happens with your own bodies and, and find out whether what I'm saying is relevant for you or not. But the fact is, is that it talked about eccentric movements, movements where you concentrate on the negatives will influence a different muscle fiber than say the positive power type contraction, right? So type 2A and 2B, I believe. Okay, if I'm wrong, just, uh, you know, that's okay. But I'm, who cares about what the name is? The bottom line is that there's a different process that happens when somebody concentrates on a slow negative. And what it also does, according to this book, is that it prevents the type 2a muscles from being active so slowly but surely the type 2b outnumber the type 2a and the 2a basically start to go uh extinct basically right because the type 2b start to take over and this was what happens from slow negatives now short term this can lead to muscle gains because the type 2b uh, fibers get more activated but long term, if you do it for too long, then you actually get less muscle mass because the type 2A start to depopulate, I guess. And the funny thing is, when I was reading this, it was like, okay, this is an explanation of something that I've experienced. When I did too much slow negative type movements, like really slow contractions, at first I found that I got a little bit of results. At first I found I got a little bit of results. At first I found that I got uh, some sort of uh, extra pump and, and the fullness and everything in the muscle. But at some point I found that I started to get smaller. I started to actually lose a little bit of muscle. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. Isn't time under tension everything? And uh, apparently it's not. Time under tension is not everything. It also is how much weight are you moving? And this is why I disagree sometimes with the HIIT programs and stuff like that in, in this way is that they say it, your muscle doesn't know what weight it's lifting. Uh, yeah, actually the muscle does know what weight it's lifting because it's just like a rope. You know, a thousand pounds of tension on a rope there will be a different type of tension on that rope than 500 pounds of tension, you know, held for a long period of time. It is a different type of stress. It does stress the muscle differently. So really what I found was that a combination of both techniques is necessary. But again, if you do too much of the negative stuff and not enough of the strength stuff as a natural athlete, uh, because I'm a natural athlete, so I can talk to you from that experience, uh, you will not grow. Now, if you're not a natural athlete, Again, that will be a totally different ball game because now your hormonal system starts to take over the entire process. Now there are different rules, right? So that's why I think you can see some of the guys that are not natural being able to do certain techniques and it looks like they're really doing glorified aerobics, but they're getting this massive amount of muscle growth. Uh, it just seems like their body is just waiting to put on muscle. And, and I always tell this story, there was a guy that didn't know how to train legs for the life of him at the gym that I used to train at. And he started doing some unnatural substances and just from leg presses, his legs just went through the roof. Whereas before he was walking around like an ostrich, like he just had stick legs, right? So again, this is why I think there's so much confusion about what training works and what training doesn't. Uh, one of the reasons is because all training works to a point, all of it works. Anytime you put tension on a muscle and you challenge it, it's going to work. But 
the more elite you get and the closer you get to an elite level in your own training, the more uh, impeccable you'll have to become when it comes down to using certain techniques for your training, right? So yeah, I hope this helps you understand that maybe why slow negatives aren't working for you all the time. Uh, because there is a tendency for guys to just you know pummel themselves and say, oh no, negatives, 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 and doing slow time under tension all the time should be what works. But if you notice that you're shrinking, there is an article that Fred Hatfield wrote that, that kind of explained that, and, uh, and it kind of makes sense. So anyway, I just thought you guys would be interested in hearing about that. Sorry if the audio is not perfect on this. I'm just using my GoPro and everything. And don't worry, this is not going to be something I do all the time, but it's just something I'm doing on the go just for something different, you know, because you guys like to change things up. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot to the Patreon supporters. And uh, yeah, if you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalandbodybuilding.com and take care for now. That's right, take care for now.